Tribe, how you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I hope you like this video. <clears throat> New show alert. This is going to be, you know, so, okay. This is the real world homecoming um, New Orleans. Now, I am a, a, a real world baby. And what I mean by that is that I've been watching the real world. I don't anymore. But I probably watched the first 10 to 12 seasons of the real world. Um religiously i even auditioned for the real world at one time uh, made it past round one but i didn't go any further because i was thinking to myself do i really want my life to be on television for the next 20 years um because at that point i think i'll audition for the season that would have been boston so by that time we were, they were on like season six season seven whatever and they were rerunning like all of the old seasons and i just remember thinking oh my goodness i don't know if this is what i want to like i don't know if i want mtv to be in control of Showing people what I did at 20. You know what I mean? Even then, I was thinking like that. Um, who knew that the real world was just like the, the beginning of reality TV and this would be the norm that people would live their lives out loud like this. Anyway, might have made a different decision. I don't know. But then again, the person I was at 20, I think it was like 22, 23. Whew. Anyway. So... Real MTV has been doing this great thing. They've been revisiting the old seasons. And I said they did season one, which I said I definitely want to go back and look at season one. Season two, which of course is the infamous Tammy Roman season, which that came out, I believe, like late last year or like over the summer, spring. I mean, summer, fall. And I said I was going to review it then, but I didn't get around to it. And it sort of kind of got old. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do New Orleans. And then if I need to double back, I'll double back. So, because I think I, I still want to go back and watch the first and second one, which I never watched. So this is Homecoming. The concept is that they're bringing all the original cast members back. They're going to come back to the city where they were, probably get as close as they can to the actual house where they stayed. And instead of it being like six months, which I think the original real world is six weeks or six months, they're just coming together for two weeks or a week. I think two weeks is, this, is what they said. So they got the original players back in New Orleans. So let's go through who the original players are. Melissa. Melissa was the short firecracker, right? She's half black, half Filipino. I always loved Melissa. I thought Melissa was, I, I loved her. Um, they tried to spin Melissa's storyline like she had, like she was an alcoholic and she had this horrible drinking problem. And she may or may not have. In hindsight, because again, I don't remember every single episode and every single event. But in hindsight, Maybe she did. I don't know. Maybe she'll talk about it as the episodes go on. But they didn't really touch on it in episode one. So, um, then we have Julie. We're going to come back around it. Well, no, we'll go ahead and go to Julie because, ooh, Julie. Julie, who actually I really loved Julie on the, the, the season. It wasn't until after the season and, I, you know, things started kind of being put out there that I was like, ooh, Julie. But Julie was the Mormon from Utah who went to Brigham Young, who lived this Mormon lifestyle and did everything her parents told her to do, who basically was using this as an opportunity to explore, date, drink, curse, do all the things that she was told she couldn't do. And it actually ended up costing her because I believe she ended up getting kicked out of school when the show was over and once the show aired um, because she violated a lot of rules, okay? Then we have David. David, who now goes by the name of Tokyo. David was an aspiring singer from Chicago who was a total ass. Like, let's just listen. Ain't no need in, ain't no need in cutting corners. David was an ass. And um, actually, at the, by the end of this episode, David was probably one of my favorite people because of something that happened. We'll get to that. We have Danny. Danny was the typical frat guy. No, that wasn't Danny. Sorry. Danny was um the guy who, um he was gay. And he had literally just come out of the closet like prior to going on the show. He was in a relationship and he was just dealing with coming to grips with his sexuality and being out with it and all of the things that come with it. Now remember, this was 22 years ago. So... It would be a totally different situation today than it was then. But he really sort of, like he talks later on, he de facto became the spokesperson for everything gay. You know, he was like that guy. 
Um, then we have Jamie. Jamie was the stereotypical um, frat guy. He went to Ivy League. He went to Cornell. Um, drove a BMW. And, you know, he was the living life because I know my life is going to be good. I know I'm great. And I'm just down here to have a good time kind of guy, right? Kelly. Kelly was the... She was from Arkansas or Tennessee. Um, and she was sort of perceived as like the sorority girl, but she was like, actually, I was never in a sorority. She was like, I tried to rush a sorority and I ended up not finishing the process, right? Um, she was the serious one. She wanted to be like the next Oprah Winfrey and like their jobs on their season was at a radio station so or a TV station. So it was right up her alley and that's really what she was trying to do. Now, in, in fast forward to where we are today, she's actually married to Scott Wolf, the actor Scott Wolf, who became famous during the show Party of Five. Mm-hmm. So she now Kelly Wolf. Mm-hmm. Then we have Matt. Matt was the virgin, the, you know, I'm very dedicated to my Christianity. I'm very dedicated to my faith kind of guy. And he was cool. Him and Julie sort of had this flirtation. But he really wasn't trying to compromise where he was in his life at that time. Like, he really, and he said that he stayed um, abstinent until he got married. He now has six kids, I think he said, six or seven. So you made up for lost time. So everybody came back, right? And the house, they're not staying in the exact house because the exact house they were staying in is called Belfort. It is now like a high-end boutique hotel that I'm sure MTV was like, yeah, we ain't got the budget to rent this out for two weeks for just them. Plus, it's like a hotel now instead of like a house with different rooms. It's like a literal hotel. But the house that they have is pretty damn close. Like, it looks very similar. Very much that's that, that, you know, New Orleans architecture and everything. So, here's the thing, you guys. <clears throat> Coming back into the house, I mean, I don't know how many episodes we're going to get. But in this first episode, it was a whole lot of hugging, a whole lot of smiles, a whole lot of, hey, how you doing? Oh, my goodness, what's going on? But the elephant in the room was Julie. Because after the show was done, Julie did some dirty stuff to her castmates. And again, who you are at 22, 23 is not who you are at 42, 43, right? So I remember they, they did a flashback scene of Melissa cussing Julie out on Battle of the Sexes. You know how like role rules and all that. So it was a battle of the sexes and Julie was on there and so was Melissa and Julie was acting like everything was all good and Melissa basically cussed her out and was like don't talk to me don't speak to me I don't ever want to talk to you again and Melissa said basically that was the last time she ever talked to Julie now on screen and I remember this happening because Julie was sitting there like grinning and laughing the whole time Melissa was cussing her out now Melissa took it as oh so it's funny to you it's funny like my feelings are funny in the moment I took it as she's nervous that's nervous laughter that's embarrassed laughter. That's not, oh, I think you're funny. That's, I don't know what else to do right now, laughter. Now, Danny said he also has got some beef with Julie because he said Julie did some dirty stuff to him too. So, here's what Julie is accused of doing. Now, Julie admitted to what she did to Matt, but she said she has no idea what Melissa is talking about. But let's get into it. So after the real world is over, there are all sorts of opportunities for them to make money. They can work for the network or they can represent the show. They get asked to host red carpets and speak at different, you know, and speaking engagements and things like that. So Danny said that there was a camp that him and Julie were supposed to speak at. And Julie actually wrote a letter to the camp basically saying that he was a horrible person that, you know, he's going to go to hell because he's gay and, you know, he has questionable morals and he shouldn't really be around children and blah, 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 blah. So, of course, he got fired from the job. Julie got the job. And he said, never in 20 years did I get a phone call, an apology, or anything. Julie was very nervous about going into the house because she knew she had done some shit. I'm going to give her this much credit. I'm going to give her credit for walking into that lion's den. How about that? I'm going to give her credit for walking in the lion's den. But on the flip side, girl, 
So, as soon as Julie walks in the door, she's crying and she's apologizing. And here's what I love about Danny. Okay, I don't know if I'm going to love Danny when it's over with, but here's what I love about Danny. He was like, yeah, I'm I'm not ready for this. Like, I'm not ready to receive this. I, I, I need to process. I'm, I'm not at a place where I can accept this. There needs to be some more conversation. Like, literally, you have not picked up the phone to call me, to reach out to me, to talk to me in 20 years. And now it's, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, with tears. He said, it just seems very theatrical to me at this point. I said, yes, Danny. Do not let her come in there with her white woman tears and get off the hook that easily. Now, that don't mean y'all can't find a way and make amends and have some real conversations. But don't let her walk in the door and be like, it's okay. It's okay. I love you. It's okay. Uh-uh. Danny was like, all right, then. Cool. So then Julie tried, after she hugged everybody else, baby, she tried to walk over to Melissa. Melissa was like, nah. Which I already know how Melissa gonna keep it. I know how Melissa gonna keep it, okay? So David actually had a, uh, um, David actually had a, uh, um, TV guy from their actual season. And like, it was like a, where, what are they going to do after the show is over? And Melissa had said something about she was going to, her and Julie were moving to LA together. And Melissa was like, mm. because literally she said, you know, Julie was her best friend on the show. And they, they had plans to move to LA together. And she was like, well, we both moved to LA. We just didn't move together. And Julie was like, well, I did move to LA. You don't remember I moved to LA? And she was like, no, you moved to Orange County. I moved to LA. Which, listen, had I never watched The Real Housewives of Orange County, I wouldn't think there's a difference. Had I never watched, what was that show that used to come on? I think it was called The O.C. About the kids in high school. It was sort of like an O.C. version of 90210. I wouldn't think there was a difference. But there is clearly a difference between Orange County and L.A. So then Julie said something about, well, Melissa, I went to your house. You don't remember me going to your house? And Melissa was like, no. And Julie got really upset that Melissa said she never remembered going to the house. Here's where I'm coming from with this. What Melissa said was, I blocked you out. I disengaged from you. And so I probably repressed a lot of memories of you because it was painful in that moment. But when I say Julie got upset to the point where she was crying because she couldn't believe that Melissa didn't remember being, um, that they were in LA together and Melissa couldn't remember that she had been to her house in LA. And Melissa was like, girl, I don't remember. Like, why you getting mad? So then they end up having the conversation that they need to have. So here's what Melissa accused. Um, so after Danny told his story, Melissa was like, wow. Well, that's what you did to me. Allegedly, what, and I, I'm saying allegedly because Julia missed what she did to Danny, but she ain't quite there to admit what she did to Melissa. But allegedly it was basically the same thing. They were both supposed to do something together some sort of speaking engagement or something and allegedly Julie wrote a letter to them saying Melissa she's gonna want too much money her speaking fee is too high but I'll do it Melissa's gonna want $20,000 I'll do it for $15,000 I'm just making up a number because I'm sure that's not what their speaking fee was back 22 years ago but I'm just making up a number and baby Julie was like I never did that what are you talking about? I never did that to you. I never did that. I never did that. Julie was, Melissa was like, girl, why would I lie? She said, we already have a pattern here. You did it to him. What makes you think you didn't do it to me? And so they're going back and forth, back and forth. And then, then Julie says, well, I haven't seen this letter. Can you show me the letter? Melissa was like, really? You think I still have a copy of that letter 20 years later? So the fact that I'm telling you it happened to me, knowing you did the same thing to him, you don't remember? And I'm supposed to just like, so you're not going to accept that you did anything to me? Like, why would I make that up? Why would I lie? She said, for the past 22 years, I have looked like the angry black woman on TV because of the way that I cussed your ass out on that on that battle of the sexes. And the way it was edited made me look like the bad guy. And for 22 years, you have sat back and act like you had no idea what I was talking about. And I was just crazy. And you looked all innocent, like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And... You really truly sitting here telling me you don't remember? 
She was like, I don't. I don't remember. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Baby. Melissa was like, do you know how bad it makes you look that the two people that you attacked are, was the gay person and the black woman? She was like, okay, so now I'm racist and homophobic. Now, let me be honest and let me be fair. Do I think that she specifically targeted the black woman and the gay man? No. But it does look bad in hindsight. In hindsight, it looks bad. Now, do I think that she purposefully targeted them? No. So, she gets upset, of course, and she's upstairs crying, and she calls her mom, and she's talking to her mom about why did she come back, and how horrible it's been, and how they're, you know, accusing her of things that she doesn't remember doing. And David, Mr. David, of all people, was the voice of reason. David came to talk to her, and David said, listen, he took her dinner, because they were sitting down to eat dinner, and Julie was like, nope, I'm going to my room. David said, listen, here's the problem. You know, because she was like, well, somebody might have did it for me, or somebody that worked for me, somebody on my team. I had different managers at that time, and somebody else might have done it, but I didn't do it. Without seeing the letter, I just can't, I can't accept that I did it without seeing the letter. He said, asking to see proof is invalidating their experience. He said, can you at least accept the fact that they would not lie and make this up about you. That they were this angry that you have not spoken to them in 20 years. Can you accept the fact that at least somebody on your behalf, if it were not you, someone who you who did it on your behalf that was working for you or working on your team did this to them? Because when you say, I don't remember, I need to see proof, you're invalidating their experience. And you may not have physically written the letter. I accept. I'll accept that you didn't physically write the letter. But you have to accept that somebody on your behalf did it. Because Melissa, do you believe Melissa would make up that the letter existed? Do you think she would have been that angry and that upset over something she did not know to be true based on the fact that y'all were such good friends at one point? Danny, you know you did it to Danny. And even with that, she made it seem like, so the way she explained the letter for Danny was that they were at a camp for, I think, kids with special needs. And they were laughing. And she thought that the people who were running the camp thought they were laughing at the kids. And so she, in an effort to cover her own ass, wrote a letter to the camp throwing him under the bus saying, hey, I wasn't doing anything wrong. He did it. He was making fun of the kids. Now, first of all, it's bad enough if he actually did that. that. I mean, if she actually did that. That's some that's some dirty shit, Julie. But he said that's not that's not he said that's not even close. You're making the letter. He said you're really whitewashing this letter and making it seem like it wasn't as bad as it was. Like you questioned my morality. My, I mean, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, my morals. You questioned my I was gonna say mortality that ain't right. You questioned my morality. You made me seem like I was this derelict and I was this horrible person and it played to my sexuality like it that's how it read and so you're making it you know you're you're kind of making it seem a little lighthearted. so after that um melissa was i mean julie was like you're right and so the last thing we see is julie going into melissa's room to talk to her even that was dramatic child she was at the door like <laughs> girl you know the cameras are on you you playing to the damn cameras go sit down now, real quick, as I give y'all the update with, I, well, the update with the rest of them that we found out. Danny lives in a cabin by himself up in the woods of Connecticut because he said he got sick of the fame. He got sick of people looking at him. He got sick. He said he's an introvert and it just, it, it, he couldn't deal with it. David, he doesn't just do, really do music anymore. He really is a writer. He does a lot of, sounds like he does like anime because he, that's where the Tokyo came from because of the um, style of writing that he does. He has a YouTube channel where he does cooking and all kinds of stuff. So he's still creative. He's still a creative. And we really haven't gotten a lot more information about the rest of them. Again, I'm sure we're going to get more as the episodes go on. But anyway, that was the first episode. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.